Good morning and welcome to Camilla and I and we're speaking very softly today because we're here in the new forest in our secret location quick flip you around and show you the view on Camilla and I so yeah we're literally deep in this area of ferns and this is a little shelter and already this morning we've had a couple of stags so a quick view of a couple of stags and that's why we're here today on Camilla and I we're here today for Britain's largest mammal and uh, Oh, just a couple of deer over there in the distance. Quick flip you around. Yeah, it's just a couple of deer to the left hand side there. Beautiful. Let's see if I can get those on film for you. Anyway, I can hear some roaring, some herding going on in this gap over here, beyond here. So I'm hoping something comes up. And also today, we've got a secret weapon. We've got a new camera. Well guys, I've now got some uh, fallow deer and a couple of fallow bucks straight ahead, but uh, they're through a pile of trees. Anyway, what I'm not gonna do is make a dash for this tree line up ahead. I'm gonna wait and hope that they come towards me because they did seem to be heading in this general direction anyway we'll see Well, just had a lone hind in. Um, amazing. Came quite close, actually. But uh, unusual to find one on their own. So, uh, obviously got lost from the herd. So, uh, fingers crossed. When you see one, you normally see a couple. Anyway, I'm looking around now. And I can't see anything else at the moment. Yeah, got to keep pretty quiet in this uh, position here. just heard a big roar from the uh, forest behind so uh, yes I expect we'll move on there could have been a stag anyway got a number of roe deer managed to climb a tree which was uh, yeah good little tip is um, if you can climb a tree because um, The deer don't see above. The deer don't see above, sort of 20 foot up. That's why you see these um, shooting platforms up in the tree. Because basically the deer don't look up, 
They're always looking down. They don't see a threat from the air at all. So uh, climb a tree. Anyway, I've just spotted a little flock of fallow deer now. So uh, straight ahead. You won't be able to see them through this part to record them. But yeah, shh. Well, I'm just going to move position finally from my uh, position in the ferns on the edge of a clearing. I'm just going to move position and uh, hopefully sneak up on some more deer around the corner. Something disturbed the fellow deer. I was miles away. I was 300 yards, 400 yards off, but um, something spooked them and they flew off further around the corner. So I suspect I'm okay to go on this path at the moment. Quick flip you around, show you what I mean. So yeah, so we've come from this clearing here and we're moving round stealthily to the next clearing area. And of course there could be deer anywhere. So, well, Got to be very careful. Try not to uh, tread on too many of these things. So I did hear a haunty bellow at one point. There was definitely a stag behind me at one stage. And indeed the two stags I shot early on in the day came over in this direction. So I am expecting them to come back this way. But... Uh, yeah, this is wildlife, folks. Who knows? Anyway, <clears throat> I'll go into this denser area of bracken. Oh, I can see a couple of deer now moving in the tree line a long way off. Anyway, I'll go very stealthily and uh, quietly through this period. Anyway, I'll speak to you in a minute, folks. Speak to a minute. Yeah, look at this magnificent clearing for the deer to roam in and indeed graze. Just a few new forest ponies over there at the moment. marvellous little encounter there. Fallow buck and uh, fallow deer. Ooh, came so close. A quick flip you around. They just here had a lovely encounter with some fallow buck and the fallow deer. Absolutely beautiful. I mean they came so close. I just froze. I was caught right out in the open here and uh, anyway I just froze and they still came towards me so I didn't move at all absolutely amazing anyway behind quite a few logs so I didn't actually get a clear shot but I did get some nice very close up shots and then of course eventually I think they sniffed me I think they did smell me and then they moved off they didn't go off too quickly but they did just um, trot off into the uh, denser woodland there. Amazing. Oh, some lovely action. Got a little bit of footage and a couple of snaps. Beautiful. Wow, I just encountered a roe deer. So, uh, yeah, that makes three deers we've seen this morning. Fallow, red deer and uh, roe deer. Amazing. This one was just sitting down amongst the bracken Quick flip you around, managed to get a shot through these branches here before it uh, 
obviously saw me as it was literally only oh, 10 yards away. So as soon as it saw me, it did get up and uh, go away. Amazing action this morning from the new forest on Camilla and I. Beautiful. Three of our native deer. Beautiful. Well, we come out today with only a very small backpack and uh, yeah, a very small camera. And uh, that's why I suppose that's the excuse we'll use for purchasing this camera on Camilla and I. Um, as you know, we don't stint on equipment. You can only be get the shot once. So uh, yeah, we try our best to get the shot. And of course, the main thing is you have to get into position for the shot. It's not just a question of buying the world's most expensive camera and then just magically taking wildlife photography photos. And uh, indeed, when tracking deer like we were today, well, we weren't so much tracking deer, we're more stationary in one spot and uh, climbing the odd tree. But um, no, we were just, uh, we were just sussing out ready for the rut and it's not quite the rutting season yet on uh, Camilla and I in the new forest I mean it's usually the end of uh, end of October beginning in November is usually the best time for rutting stags here in the new forest but we've had some marvellous stuff today on Camilla and I just with the new camera in some respects it actually does slightly more than the uh, A1. I mean it's got a couple of functions like bracket which I mentioned earlier and indeed the um, focus tracking when in video mode. Incredible. Got a Bionics processor or something which um, obviously we don't make the cameras but um, you get the idea and um, yeah it's, um, it's absolutely amazing and in such a small package obviously we've gone from 50 megapixels to a crop sensor 26 megapixels um, but we'll see the results this morning and uh, some of them were taken in reasonably low light level so uh, yeah I think we've got a couple of okay shots I mean the red deer in particular first thing in the morning the, the stags were taken in very low light so uh, I'm not sure how those shots would have come out but uh, at least we were in position to get them and that is the advantage of a lightweight APS-C system and indeed we also bought the 70 to 350 crop sensor lens for E lens E 4.5 to 6.3 70 to 300 to complement the uh, the latest flagship APS-C line on the Sony and uh, anyway anything else I get I'll put it at the end of this video but yeah we've gone mad on Camilla and I more money than sense and we've bought an APS-C camera for mobility principally but also travel we have got a few travel adventures coming up soon so uh, yeah also you can put this on a plane whereas it's uh, full frame gear as we all know lugging that around well you need a trolley and you can't get a trolley in the new forest anyway hope you enjoyed today's episode of Camilla and I and the new Camilla the Sony a6700 available from Castle Cameras and I have a good one bye for now